Okay, all right. So we are delighted again to have um, EJ with us to enlighten us about the pattern. Please take it. Okay, good. Um, okay, so today much less people as I expected. <laughs> Okay, now I think we are ready to uh, talk about uh, the real stuff of variogenesis. So, uh, so let us start talking about dynamical generation of Symmetry. So for this, uh, Sarov realized that the three conditions, variant number violation, and C and CP violation, and then out of equilibrium. So, I mean, yeah, very no violation uh, should be there, right? So otherwise, we cannot uh, generate the variant symmetry. And then there must be a charge conjugation violation as well. So if our interaction is symmetric on the charge conjugate, then, you know, uh, from the symmetric uh, distribution, we cannot get any asymmetric distribution. So, and then it's the same as the CP. Actually, parity uh, really pl uh, doesn't play an important role. And the, the standard of the parity is maximally violated, right? So uh, parity violation is, uh, is automatic in the standard model. And now the equilibrium. So uh, baryon number biting uh, process uh, should be, say, one side. So if back reaction is also equilibrium, then you know, uh, baryon number will be produced and annihilated. Uh, back and forth, so we never uh, uh, get uh, final variant of symmetry. So, yeah, typically uh, for for the second uh, case, okay, so we assume there is some uh, B violating processes. So, initial state I going to final state. This is a variant number. Let's assume that this is a variant number violating process. Then charge conjugation will be no, uh, the charge conjugate state I bar going to uh, F bar. And then uh, parity, on the parity, I may transform to different state. And then on the C, I prime goes to its antiparticle uh, state. So this is a CP and this is a parity kind of thing. So finally, uh, from this, we may produce a C or CP or symmetry quantity in this process. So. I going to F will produce, you know, a certain baryon number. Also, same uh, baryon number for I don't know, maybe maybe different baryon numbers produced. Anyway, positive baryon number and then negative baryon number from antiparticle decays, right? Uh, or uh, antiparticle processes. So they are related by C, and this is led by CP, so it should be non zero. If uh, C and CP conjugate, I mean, uh, that means that the, I mean, this quantity is the same, and then CP is conjugate, this quantity is the same, so it should vanish. 
So although this is non-zero, if the back reaction is also in equilibrium, you know, so produced baryon asymmetry will disappear. So uh, uh, we never get uh, non-vanishing uh, uh, baryon asymmetry uh, at the end of the day. So this is the condition uh, we need. Uh, any process, it can be, uh, yeah, any, it can be two, two, two scattering as well. So this, yeah, there are other ideas, WIMP biogenesis. <laughs> okay, so two, yeah, one, two particle uh, annihilating into three, four different particles. And then, you know, this, if this process is uh, variant number violating, also CP, CNCP violating, there is some CP, uh, a violating phases somewhere. So WIMP variogenesis in the SUGI model, WIMP can have this variant uh, number variety interaction. But they are typically also, yeah, it's, uh, the, the regional parameter space realizing this is uh, it's not, it's not trivial, actually. Yeah, somehow one is, I, I don't remember quite, but uh, one is a heavier mass for WIMP and, well, well actually, yeah, there is certain, yeah. This is a possibility. And then, of course, and we are, we'll be talking about left turn analysis, baryon uh, asymmetry produced from right hand neutrino decay. So, I mean, yeah, okay, so this is N going to L, L bar, and this is asymmetric. So, right hand neutrino is a neutral particle, so it doesn't carry any, uh, yeah, this is an own antiparticle. Okay, so now, then uh, obviously we can ask whether standard model uh, has all these three ingredients, baryon number violation through anomaly, right? Stored condition. Ah, okay, so So back, if back reaction is also equilibrium, you know, it's produced, destroyed, it's produced, destroyed. And then we start with this, the symmetric uh, initial condition. So, yeah. So, I mean, for this, uh, we need to discuss some, uh, some quite non-trivial, <laughs> Uh, things uh, which will be needed uh, for our uh, uh, next discussions. So I will not go into the details. So I just uh, leave the details as a homework for you. So difficult part for homework. So yeah, there are some articles, uh, literatures, uh, books you can read and to get understand. So I try to give you some uh, deliver uh, some uh, basic uh, pictures. And then, okay, so B violation is a present in the standard model due to quantum anomaly. You know, in the standard model, baryon number and lepton number are automatic symmetry, right? So if you write down SU2 cross U1 gauge inventor Lagrangian, and then uh, in the same you have a certain uh, quark and lepton uh, particle content, you write down other UCARs, gauge interactions, then at the end of the day, we realize that the baryon number and lepton number is a symmetry of the standard model. But, you know, B and L, symmetry is broken by uh, at the quantum level. So at the quantum level, is, there is so-called uh, anomaly. So B and L symmetry is not conserved. So, and then this, uh, the, one of the linear combinations, B minus L, it doesn't have anomaly. So it can be a part of a gauge symmetry, probably at high, 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 high temperature, high scale. So it can be also, you know, uh, U1, B minus can be a part of SO10. Uh, so, but B plus L is anomalous, so it cannot be gauged. So B plus L is violated.
So there is called the spheroid. Some uh, very ex exotic object like a spheroid, which really violates people's cell. And then uh, I cannot go into the details, so I'll just uh, tell you the story, and then uh, I hope uh, you can uh, study yourself all the details. So it may take uh, some, a lot of time. And then out of equilibrium, uh, no, uh, CNCP violation. And then also, as I said, uh, so in, in standard model, there's uh, a non trivial phase uh, which can distinguish the, the particle uh, interaction and antiparticle interaction. Also, parity is maximally violated in the standard model. So there are uh, ingredients, number two there. And then out of equilibrium condition, may met during the electric phase transition. So at the temperature around 100 GeV, so before 100 GeV, uh, the universe may be in a symmetric universe. So uh, uh, electric symmetry non-broken, named the Higgs wave vanishes. But uh, as uh, the universe cools down, there may be phase transition so that uh, our whole universe will be in a uh, uh, non-trivial vacuum. Uh, uh, Higgs wave non-zero. So, I mean, this process is, of course, you know, there is uh, is a, a non-equilibrium uh, process. This is a one-sided process. We never uh, come back to uh, the opposite direction. So, in this case, uh, I mean, still we have to see whether this out of equilibrium condition is good enough to produce uh, uh, the required bilinear symmetry. QCD phase transition, uh, yeah, it's a good question. Uh, and then uh, I guess uh, the answer is no in the minimal setup. QCD doesn't violate the baryon number. And B plus L is there, but this is uh, the weak, weak uh, interaction part. But uh, I mean, uh, if a QCD is associated with some axions and so on, probably there is some idea to to uh, 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 play it around. Okay, so yeah, let me. I mean, uh, actually, I'm not. Uh, my knowledge in the electric baryogenesis is not. Uh, is very limited, so I never worked on it. So, but uh, somehow we cannot avoid talking about this process. So I'll try to try my best to deliver some uh, basic ideas, uh, basic ingredients. So, so number one, uh, 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 to be more specific, so we have the standard model. So hypercharge. Then we have all the covers. So H bar, sometimes I write bar, sometimes I write uh, compressed conjugate, or even sometimes dagger. So uh, yeah, at this moment, let's write the uh, bar. I mean, basically, this is a complex conjugate, charge conjugate state of H. And then you know, we have one, two, three, four, five, six uh, fields and three conditions. So, so there must be three uh, U1 symmetries remaining. So one must be hypercharge, which, we, which is gauged, and the other one was B. And the lepton number.
So the B current is obviously This one, you know, Q is a doublet. It contains up and down. So it's uh, basically UL bar, UL D plus DL bar DL. And then lepton current. And then again, L, left-handed L is, uh, is a doublet. OK, so the thing is that um, uh, please, uh, oh, yeah, good. Thank you. Yes. I want NF. Okay, so we know the NF is three. Thank you. Okay. This magic word anomalous, meaning So this is SU2 L gauge position, W plus minus zero. And then here is, you know, uh, you can have quark, left-handed quark and uh, right-handed, uh, yeah, left-handed quark and left-handed leptons only. So right-handed uh, guys doesn't couple to W. So then uh, here, if we put B or L uh, uh, current, and then uh, 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 you can calculate this uh, one loop diagram. So this is called the triangle diagram having anomaly. So it's, uh, it has chiral anomaly. So that uh, it vanishes. If we don't include this diagram, but if we include this one diagram, uh, the the quantity you will get so this tilted guy is a dual uh, field. It's defined by. So um, I hope <laughs> you read, uh, so for instance, Peshkin. Or uh, some other uh, lecture notes. And then uh, uh, please try to follow the calculations to see, indeed, uh, this, anomaly, uh, this uh, diagram uh, doesn't vanish. So this is a so-called chiral anomaly. So it happens uh, whenever we have gamma five current. You know, this is due to this chiral structure, maximal parity violation of the standard model. Only left-handed guy couples to W that contains gamma five part. So it's a one minus gamma five V minus interaction. 
So the vector part, uh, actually, if this, is, this was a vector current, it vanishes. But due to gamma 5 part, so this diagram is finite. So one loop, I mean, uh, this is uh, it's a one loop finite. So later it was also proven that uh, it is exact all loop. So this one loop diagram, and then if you calculate the higher loops, then uh, this anomaly doesn't change. So, It, yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, no. Uh, uh, yeah, actually, every vortex can't be gamma 5. It's a left handed cause. I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, basically, yeah, if we, it has a vector like, if it has a gamma, gamma 5, gamma 5, gamma 5, it's gamma 5. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, gamma 5, 1, 1 is gamma 5. Yes. So, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yes, yes, yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, for instance, so if you put photon here, then, then uh, what, what happens? Uh, yeah, this is a vector uh, current, but you know, uh, if it, this has gamma 5, it, it doesn't vanish. That's why pi 0, Couples to some, uh, you know, combination of quarks uh, containing gamma five part. So this is, I mean, this cross means this uh, uh, some quark. So this is a pi interaction due to this uh, part. Uh, I mean, we get a non-vanishing uh, value. So from this, uh, we can calculate uh, the amplitude of pi zero going to gamma gamma. And then this is nicely also explained in the book by Peskin and that. So, I mean, uh, for this I may need the more, three, three more hours, I two more hours, so let me just skip. And then another stuff is that uh, this is, uh, it's a total derivative. So there could be some uh, the field configuration, I mean, W gauge was some uh, some operator uh, 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 written in terms of the W boson uh, gauge field, the W gauge field. So that uh, their derivative, uh, if you take a derivative, then okay. So this is identity. So this part is actually kind of total derivative like this. So Yes, yeah, good. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, if there is uh, some combination of uh, J, uh, B current and K current, so just uh, take, uh, subtract this then, this says a conserved number, uh, which will give some interesting uh, phenomena. So I think uh, you are not ready to accept all of this. <laughs> it's not the easy part. So I, although I am saying uh, in words e easily, but uh, uh, you need to digest it. And then uh, I, yeah, I hope you, you go to the literature and read and try to reproduce calculations and then uh, uh, try to convince yourself that, OK, this is indeed what is happening. So it's fortunate that I don't have to repeat all this <laughs> heavy stuff in this uh, short lecture. So, so let us take this statement uh, granted. So there are classical field configurations. of S2, SU2L gauge boson.
that has a degenerate vacua, vacua two C's or is two C? kind of uh, topological number. So called the John Simons number, which is uh, integers, which are integers. Ah, OK. Actually, this is a combination of uh, W gauge version and Higgs. So if you go to literature, I mean, you can, uh, you can uh, uh, see the definite uh, field uh, com uh, configuration. So. Now, uh, depending on the chan Simons number from 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2, so we have a non-trivial vacuum. So, I mean, you have some classical object having uh, some, uh, some, some functional form of uh, W and H. And then uh, if you calculate the energy density of the, uh, the subject, that vanishes, but uh, each state may have different uh, quantum numbers, so called the chan Simons number. So this, that corresponds to the, the K0 part uh, of this uh, whole integration. So then, so the zero vacuum means that uh, this is a so-called trivial uh, uh, configuration. So, so it is, uh, this, this state is, uh, you know, uh, continuously connected to the vanishing uh, field value, W equal to zero, H equal to zero. This is called the trivial configuration. Uh, but uh, this, if we have this one state field configuration, some configuration of W and H, uh, you cannot shrink it to, to the trivial one continuously. You know, this is kind of, uh, you know, this uh, circle mapping to circle, right? So if you uh, circle around twice, then this, uh, this number, we have a quantum number two, or one, or zero. If it is zero, then there is no circle going to circle. It's going to circle going to some, uh, some point. It's shrink to zero. So this kind of topological property is there. So that uh, this uh, different, this, uh, uh, the state with a different uh, quantum number, NS, NCS, uh, uh, have uh, the design, uh, have the same vacuum value. So now from this, what you know is that the actually in the field space, if you calculate the energy of the state, then uh, there is a height. So this height is uh, so-called spiraling height which is about so alpha w is what about uh, uh, 1 over 30 so this is uh, the large number it's 80 so um, Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I mean if you have uh, high here high enough energy you can you can yeah go freely. But the, we are sitting here. 
So the only way going to this is quantum tunneling. Yeah. I mean, you see, I mean, it cannot be shrink to zero doesn't mean that you cannot go to the other state. I mean, there's a field configuration which you cannot, I mean, you know, if uh, they are connected by gauge transformation, so that's, uh, that's the same, same state. So by continuous gauge transformation, we cannot go from zero state to one state, for instance. But if we sit here, if we sit forever, then there's some possibility that we can tunnel to the other vacuum, all right? So this is so-called quantum uh, tunneling. And then, uh, so this vacuum tunneling uh, probability that is one, one C vector. Right. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> OK. It's one C to C. One C, OK. Huh? One C to OK, good. <laughs> I, am, <laughs> I am really confused about this. Uh, uh, vac uh, vacuum tunneling. Two ends, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you correct it. So at zero temperature, there, is, there can be quantum tunneling. So this rate, Yeah, if you, lo you live long enough, you may transform <laughs> tunnel to a trivial vacuum or whatever. Okay, so yeah, alpha 2 was uh, It's a tunneling, uh, no units. Uh, no units. Uh, okay, sorry, no. Just take, yeah. Yeah, I omit all the details. <laughs> Yeah, at the end of this, uh, there must be a rate giving you the probability, which is this one. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, good. Um, but as uh, pointed out by uh, our students, so you can, you know, if we have enough energy, we just, you know, free to move around different vacuum vector. So electric phase transition, 100 GeV. Or in particular, it should be if uh, temperature is higher than, than the uh, spiral energy, then uh, And also, I just write this formula. So at high temperature, the transition rate is given by uh, this. And uh, low temperature, there must be Boltzmann suppression like this. So T, much smaller than the uh, electric uh, phase tension temperature. So E is on is this value. And then, you know, if our temperature is 10 GeV, then we can have a very uh, suppressed uh, 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 virtual factor. So, I mean, initially, uh, the disparity rate was uh, estimated by uh, Shaposnikov, I think. Then, at that time, he had uh, alpha 2 to the power of 4. Then uh, later people realized that, okay, so alpha 2 power should be 5. Then there is a pre-factor, pre a large pre-factor. So at the end of the day, the initial uh, estimation was uh, correct numerically. Huh? It's 1 over 30. Oh, this is uh, uh, the SU2 gauge coupling constant. 
So G2 itself is about 0.7. Oh, uh, okay. So this is transition uh, rate from uh, from zero to one vacuum, for instance. Yeah. Uh, okay. So ah, uh, I was uh, I was skipping uh, this part. Okay. So yeah, the chance I must, yeah, I, I just say word. So. This is nothing but the integration of you know zero component of this current K mu. It's uh, you know uh, certain quantum number. Then, okay, so So, I mean, again, so as you said, so this combination, the B minus NF, uh, uh, say, K0 charges are conserved. So what does it mean? So at high temperature, we can uh, uh, freely move from zero state to one state or two states to this state. And then uh, when, I, when you move from zero state to one state, Zero state to one state, there must be corresponding change in baryon number and lepton number, right? So we can change baryon number and lepton number by, say, one unit, meaning that uh, we change the vacuum uh, state, uh, the change uh, one unit in sun Simon's number. Okay, so yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> Very good. So, yeah, okay, so then, yeah. So you are asking whether we can have uh, this rate is uh, frequent enough. So for this, we have to compare this rate with a uh, Hubble parameter, which is uh, about... So then, uh, switch is about 130 GeV. I mean, the critical temperature of electric phase transition is about 130 GeV. So if temperature is between uh, 130 GeV to 10 to 12 GeV, this interaction is in equilibrium. So that uh, yeah, we can fully move from uh, baryon number zero state to one state to two state and so on and so forth. So baryon number violation. So this is further on uh, uh, this uh, some mysterious object like a spileron uh, can be you know in thermal equilibrium. This spileron uh, process can be in thermal equilibrium, which changes baryon and lepton number. So. So this is uh, all from the to, to con chiral anomaly. So B plus L was an anomalous uh, uh, quantum number. It couples to W W dual, and then uh, W dual has some field configuration, uh, which is nothing but a total derivative. And then uh, at the end of the day, so we realize that this combination uh, should be conserved. So then, okay, so. From zero state to uh, one state, back and forth. Uh, so how many quarks and leptons we create? 
So we have to change baryon number by, by one unit, also lepton number by one unit. So then uh, we know uh, in the uh, what is this object. And then yeah, this object somehow should contain you know this process uh, should be flavor blind, should be colorless, standard of the singular field. And then if you construct this dimension six operator, doublet, quark doublet, quark doublet, quark doublet times lepton doublet. So we know that this is a uh, SU3, SU2, U1 uh, singlet dimension six operator. So then, uh, then okay, so this process also, the, all the three flavors, say should be there so then you know you see i mean you know this uh, if we start from zero to this state uh, the, there appears uh, three leptons so lepton number violating by three unit and then also here quark carries uh, baryon number one third and then since we have three quarks in this state it's a baryon number one state and then there must be three uh, flavor of this so, so this is a, this Fallaron process actually changes uh, zero vacuum to uh, one vacuum, which creates or annihilates uh, this much quarks and leptons. Yes. Yeah, yes. So? So is it well defined to talk about changing uh, NS? This uh, chance is. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So is it uh, sensible to talk about changes in some chance? Because there is not one chance, like, because there is a tunnel in one chance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that, that's what you are saying. Yeah. So we can freely change from uh, B L equal to zero to uh, B L equal to three and six was and so on and so forth. So we can go from one of the vector to another vector. That's right. Yeah. So even if earlier we start up with. Uh, so I mean, yeah. So our assumption was that uh, we start with uh, uh, B equal to zero universe. But there is a, just a B plus L by things following process, changing the baryon number. So this interaction, so from B equal to zero to B equal to three, uh, is I mean this process in, is in equilibrium. Of course, the back reaction also is equilibrium. So yeah. So so the sub second condition, I uh, know uh, B B violation is there in the standard model. Mm-hmm. So then there could be tunneling and you can go to... It's not tunneling, it's just, you know, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's moving from one, one state to the other state, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so, uh, okay, actually, you know, Uh, I think it should be the same. Yeah, one to two. Yeah, it's a changing by one unit. I think it should be the same. Yeah, and changing by two units. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, maybe more difficult. But the high temperature. I mean, you know, we can actually so, so move around freely. So, so. Uh, I mean, again, I think, uh, so we have, uh, you know, uh, B, the state with B equal to L equal to zero, and then B equal to L equal to three state. So, I mean, you know, so we have a different state, 
but that high temperature uh, between these two, so you can have uh, equilibrium process. So, as far as this is in equilibrium, and then you cannot produce very smith eventually, right? So there must be CP phase, uh, CP violation, as well also uh, uh, out of equilibrium conditions to met, uh, I mean, uh, to realize three uh, Sahara conditions. So this this uh, process, uh, baryon, so that, that means the standard model at the quantum level, there is a baryon number violating process due to this uh, mysterious object as follows. Okay, acceptable? <laughs> Yeah, I, yeah. So uh, uh, you may need some time to uh, digest it. Okay. Yeah, that's the one one thing. And the second one is a CP violation. So in the standard model, uh, we know that uh, CP is violated by uh, CKM. Phase. Right, so the quark quark coupling, if you write down quark quark coupling, So same for uh, down type quark. So this matrix contains some uh, non-tibial uh, phase. So charge conjugation, uh, f by charge conjugation, this operator will go to this operator. Or it's the same as going taking yu to yu star. So. So there is a C and CP violation in, in, in the standard model, uh, having this complex uh, 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 matrix. Then, then the, during the electric phase transition, we can have. Uh, So the way how this uh, CP violation uh, works during the process of electric weak phase transition uh, is this. So there is uh, the true vacuum bubble. And uh, as temperature uh, becomes lower and lower, uh, this state, uh, I mean, this bubble will create and then uh, try expand. And at the end of the day, the whole universe will be in a symmetry breaking vacuum. And then uh, initially, I mean, outside the bubble, there is a symmetry uh, conserving vacuum. So, so there is a, a bubble uh, structure. There is a bubble wall here. And then outside the bubble, we have, you know, this uh, QL plus QR bar. So QL bar QR. So here QR say this is U or D, U or D. Then uh, this guy will uh, come inside the symmetry breaking vacuum. Some will transform into the, uh, get into the uh, true vacuum or some will uh, reflect. And now this is also the case for uh, the anti state. Then uh, there is a, between, a difference between Y and Y star. So because of this, uh, we expect that uh, some CP asymmetric uh, quantity in
So, uh, let's see total baryon number uh, asymmetry from this process should be finishing. I mean, so the, in, in this process, Yuka process doesn't violate variant number, right? So although we can have some asymmetric quantity due to uh, CP phase in the Yuka ones, so this uh, uh, combination may be non-zero. But uh, if we sum up all the variant number, uh, if you consider that variant asymmetry, uh, variant number, then uh, there should be no change. But this, this number and this number may be non-vanishing because of this uh, CP phase in, uh, in the Yukawa. So actually, uh, I mean, so you can accept it, right? And for, of course, for, for to, to get the detailed num uh, values, uh, you have to uh, uh, make uh, some serious calculations. But basically, the idea is that uh, there must appear, so total variant number may not change, but uh, there may change in the left-handed, right-handed uh, guys with different uh, uh, CP asymmetric quantity due to uh, the CKM phase. Now we have this uh, spiral process. So outside the bubble, at high temperature, spiral process is in equilibrium. So there may be, you know, then that acts only to the left-handed guy. So because of this uh, spiral interaction, uh, there may be depletion in the left-handed part. But not. in the right-handed part. So, so we may have a non-vanishing value. Okay. Now then, uh, we have to uh, calculate the, uh, how much. So one thing. Uh, so okay. So this uh, this uh, CP asymmetric uh, quantity must be proportional to the CKM uh, phase. But uh, how much uh, should it be? So there is a. So called the Yasko invariant. So in the Yukawa, the Yasko invariant, so all the quantities violating CP plus uh, CP, then uh, the, uh, the, the, the probability should be proportional to this uh, invariant. So which is called the Yas, I mean, this is the Yasko suggested this a long time back.
squared times um, the Yaskog invariant appearing in the CKM matrix. U S C B U B C S star. So the, yeah, this is the Yasko derivative quantity in the scan phase. And then this is a prefactor coming from the uh, mass matrix. And then, of oh, course, we know this quantity. Well, we know all the numbers. And this is. I mean, okay, so this is uh, lambda is a capable angle, which is 0 0.2, and a eta, uh, some complex related to the CKM phase, some uh, number, other one, say. It's not so small. So, but, so we are dealing with the, this uh, high, uh, the process at high temperature around the uh, uh, critical temperature, uh, which is uh, one, one, 100 GeV. So then, so we should be able to construct some dimensionless quantity uh, to uh, estimate uh, uh, how much delta can appear uh, through this CP phase. Then the, uh, the natural gas would be that the whole quantity should be normalized by the, the energy density of the universe at that time. That's 10 to minus 20. So that means, uh, I mean, we, we need this quantity to be 10 to minus 10. And then, I mean, if you follow this calculation <laughs> seriously, then at the end of the day, uh, our calculation will contain the epsilon CP. Also, so spoiler on, uh, some 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 uh, other factor from the spiral rate, but the, this may be another suppression. And then this uh, is uh, well, it doesn't matter whether this is large or small, but it's already ten to minus twenty, so it's impossible. So there is a CP phase CP violation in the standard, rate, but uh, it turned out that the the amount of CP violation in the standard rate is way too small to achieve what they need. So this is the second. And the third is the, now the, we didn't talk about out of equilibrium yet. So they, I mean, here is another difficulty. So, so from the in the standard, from the standard model uh, interactions, we can uh, actually uh, construct effective uh, uh, potential of Higgs field, uh, which is temperature dependent. So you know, uh, so uh, let's say, I mean. Uh, let's take uh, H0, I mean H, yeah. We just take uh, the, the real part, the Higgs field itself. So this is uh, Higgs potential. And then uh, temperature dependent, uh, there appears should, uh, uh, due to this, you know, Higgs itself will contribute to its uh, temperature dependent mass. So this is a uh, temperature correction. 
and then obviously at the high temperature uh, it can be larger than this negative mu squared tree level so symmetry is restored outside the bubble and then uh, more importantly there is also and then there should be also this uh, cubic term And then because of this, actually the phase transition can be, say, first order. So, so at high temperature, we have symmetric vacuum. And then as temperature uh, drops down, there can appear. And So the critical temperature, the, the, at critical temperature, the, the true vacuum is designed to false vacuum. So if there is a barrier, you know, the some process uh, cannot be efficient enough. So that gives us out of equilibrium for, for us. So the question is whether this barrier is large enough. So. So the measure of uh, out of vacuum condition for electric pyrogenesis is this quantity. I mean, if uh, the the vacuum and vacuum value is uh, is too small compared to uh, critical temperature, then you know, basically uh, we are free to move around. So uh, we, may not, we may not get uh, enough out of the condition. So this is a kind of measure to see whether we can have uh, enough out of the equilibrium. And then from this, just equating uh, these two, uh, we get So I'm not able to uh, give you some quantitative precise number, but roughly speaking, uh, the prediction uh, to have uh, uh, in, enough out of the condition is that the Higgs should be lighter than W boson mass. So, uh, but now we know that Higgs is 125 GB, so 80 GB. So this uh, electric phase transition cannot met out, enough out of liquid condition for us, for pyrogenesis. So for one, CP violation was, uh, you know, negligibly small for pyrogenesis. And then this out of liquid condition is not good enough. So standard model electric pyrogenesis never works. Then, OK, so in supersymmetry, you have more parameters. You may achieve uh, we may have uh, you know, additional CP variating phase or additional contribution from uh, uh, new particles so that we may get uh, this condition. So it turned out to be, you know, it's, there, there is some parameter space to arrange all this. But uh, now LHC actually disfavors. I mean, you know, supposedly it was not found in LHC. And then the, the limit of Suji particles became very high. So uh, this, uh, so the minimal supposedly standard model is disfavored for electric variables. Uh, these days. So as a conclusion, what is can say so actually new physics is required.
to get to realize electric weak pyrogenesis. One thing, first order phase transition, say, second, So then, you know, I mean, we have maybe introducing additional particles, second Higgs, third Higgs, or some, some uh, singlet uh, scalar coupling to Higgs. So we may change the, the effective Higgs potential to get uh, large enough. So we may add some uh, new, new, new couplings here, and then uh, we can uh, enhance this quantity also, also, the, the, so we need the additional CP violation. So again, actually, uh, uh, when people try to uh, real, achieve this, uh, usually, uh, you know, additional CP violation, they don't really uh, think of serious think seriously about uh, this. How to introduce a new CP violation, but yeah, there may be some way then. Yeah, in in some case you can uh, you can achieve this, but uh, in the minima set though you may not be able to get uh, enough CP violation, so you may have to uh, uh, no introduce another field to get CP violation uh, and so on and so forth. So yeah, there are a lot of activities uh, uh, to think of. Uh, uh, how to realize these two conditions. And then uh, at the end of the day, uh, we can get uh, electric biases. So actually, also this, uh, uh, I mean, because of the recent uh, gravitational wave detection, so if electric biases is really achieved, I mean, uh, this is the phase transition occurring around 100 GeV. So then, uh, because of this phase transition, there may appear uh, gravitational waves from this process. So if, uh, you know, this process is uh, strongly first order, stronger and stronger, you get the stronger gravitational wave signal. So they can be detected at present. So, uh, so typically, uh, LISA, uh, may be able to detect uh, a gravitational wave coming from the first order of electric phase transition. So, uh, so in connection of, with this gravitational wave physics, uh, this also became very uh, a hot topic these days. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. I mean, yeah, for this, uh, we need uh, this condition. Yeah. Yeah. And so for that, we got a range of temperature of, say, 100 GB to 25 GB. So after that, we've been only considering at, like, say, the lower, we've been considering at DC. What is yeah. considering, like, higher temperature than the V by D, maybe it's just the yeah. I mean, so we are dealing with now, so we are talking about the, the process around the critical temperature. I'm a high temperature. At the high temperature, you know, there is no symmetry breaking. So yeah, I mean, there's nothing to talk about. So at high temperature, there is no symmetry breaking at all. So no, no Higgs, no heavy gauge boson, no heavy Higgs. So nothing. Everything is in equilibrium. There, there may be people cell by violation, but in equilibrium. Starting with a symmetric uh, universe, we remain uh, being symmetric. So trivial, non-trivial thing only happens around the critical temperature. So outside the bubble, so all the uh, these features remain the same, but particle comes into the bubble. Then uh, during process, uh, I mean, so ar around the world, 
uh, we saw that there may be appear non-trivial uh, CP asymmetry. And then uh, thanks to the spiral process, some left-handed guy will be diluted away. And then uh, it comes into the bubble, then inside the bubble wall, and, and then we need out of the condition. Actually, one should be able to see this condition from this calculation, but I never done that, so I, I just took it granted. So if you're interested, please uh, yeah, read the original papers uh, to see this uh, feature more precisely. Yeah, that's right. So, will we be able to distinguish between what comes from this, this thing and the vacuum bubble? Or is it the same thing? This uh, vacuum bubble. So, there is some, also some uh, contributions of gravitation wave that is going to emerge from vacuum bubbles. Uh, Yeah, I mean, so, yeah, so I cannot give you the proper answer, but yeah. No, I cannot give you the proper, <laughs> proper answer. So, I mean, you know, I mean, during this process, you know, there are some uh, different processes producing a gravitational wave spectrum, and then then uh, some process is dominating, some other some dominating. I don't know, but still, uh, distinguishing this uh, may not be possible. No, distinction. No, actually, we, are, we will be able to see only the some of the all the processes, right? So, yeah, basically, I think we cannot do things then. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Actually, yeah. I mean, roughly. I mean, what people calculate. Uh, about the gravitational wave coming from electric resonance so having this shape, and then Lisa sensitivity region is here. So if Lisa see some <laughs> of this part, well, if not, then uh, yeah, maybe Lisa will exclude electric paralysis. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> then left is remain an uh, interesting uh, possibility. So yeah. So this is around, uh, the peak is around 10 to minus 3 hertz. Okay, so. So we have uh, 10 minutes or so. So let's see, so have any more questions? Otherwise, uh, uh, finally, we go to the story of leptogenesis for the remaining 10 minutes. All right. So, I mean, I can summarize that the electric biogenesis uh, is really difficult to achieve. And then leptogenesis is a really cute idea. Due to Fukujita and Nagida, uh, uh, so we learned that uh, there is a nice way of generating baryon symmetry in the CISO model. 
So uh, let me only talk about type 1 CISO, uh, which introduce uh, right-hand neutrino coupling to left-handed uh, doublet and Higgs and it's uh, Hermitian conjugate. And then it has a uh, Majorana mass. You know, this mass term, uh, this uh, Yucca structure, mass term structure should be L, R, R, L. But th since this is Majorana, the uh, charge of uh, N is the same as uh, NC is the same as N. So N, if you take a charge conjugate of uh, right-handed N, then it goes to left-handed N, right? So uh, basically, the charge conjugation So you might have learned that uh, in, in the Fermi operator, the charge conjugation goes like that, and then you can verify that left-handed guy go, goes right-handed guy, and so on and so forth. So then from this, you know, you can construct the mass between uh, neutrino and right-hand neutrino. So there is, there, uh, uh, from the Higgs web, the neutrino, Active, the left-hand neutrino coupled to right-hand neutrino, it gives us the, so this is, uh, I mean, you put some, you know, new L part here and there, but yeah, this is just mass matrix. And then, you can diagonalize it so when uh, this Dirac mass is much smaller than the right hand neutrino mass, uh, you can get so y is basically three by three matrix so this is a uh, Y times M inverse is also three by three matrix. So typically we take uh, uh, the diagonal mass for three Ns, M1, M2, M3. And this is uh, then you know, diagonal matrix of uh, M1 inverse, M2 inverse, M3 inverse. And then it's transpose of uh, Yucca matrix uh, multiplied by Higgs wave. So then this is our light neutral mass matrix, right? So, so active neutrino or right hand neutrino will get this. So let's, let me write down like this. So roughly speaking, you know, neutral mass uh, should be uh, below 0 0.1 electron volt. So let's take this uh, uh, representative uh, value for active neutral mass. And then right hand neutral mass, I put 10 to 10 GeV. Then this neutrino car coupling is about uh, 0 0.6, 10 to minus 2. So if I arrange the neutrino car coupling and right hand neutrino mass appropriately, I can get the observed neutrino mass, mass eigenvalues. 
So now in this model, so this is called the Taiwan CISO explaining the, the smallest of uh, uh, active neutrinos uh, masses. So this model contains a sort of, uh, satisfies sort of conditions. So here, you know, this is a, this is a right hand neutrino, so it doesn't carry any charge. The Myra neutrino, it doesn't carry any charge. So lepton number is broken. So we assign uh, zero lepton number here, then uh, this L has lepton number one. So for instance, N decays uh, violet lepton number by one unit. So since it is Majorana particle, N can decay either lepton or anti-lepton. So if right hand neutrino decaying to lepton and anti-lepton, I mean, uh, their uh, rate is different, we may produce uh, initial lepton asymmetry from right hand neutrino decay. So, so lepton number is there, uh, lepton number violation is there. But in the standard model, uh, B plus L is violated as we discussed. So then actually, uh, because of these two uh, ingredients, we can generate baryon asymmetry of the universe. So uh, you will see more explicitly how it works in more detail. And then CNCP violation. So right hand neutrino decaying to LH. And then L bar H bar, this ratio can be non-zero. This uh, difference can be non-zero. So which means that, again, here, like in uh, uh, quark Yukawa, there must be some uh, complex number in the Yukawas. So I mean, this is by three metrics. So, I mean, it is more or less clear that uh, uh, there, must, there must be a large uh, CP phase there. And third, out, out of equilibrium. So, N decays to LH, L by H bar, and back reaction uh, should be suppressed. So that means, you know, gamma i inverse decay should be smaller than the Hubble parameter at some point. And then, actually, if uh, this right hand neutral is, let's say it's 10 to 10 GeV, then above 10 to 10 GeV, there's a heavy right hand maybe in thermal equilibrium. But as temperature cools down uh, below its mass, the number density of right hand will be suppressed. There is a Boltzmann separation, exponential minus m over t. So the the in the thermal soup, uh, number of right hand becomes smaller. So then, uh, you know, there is a chance to get out of the equilibrium condition. So. Uh, so in, in the system model, you know, uh, which explains uh, lightness of the neutral masses, uh, contains all those hard of conditions. So now uh, we will see how uh, the electron is. I mean, in how we can uh, explain uh, from. From this right hand neutrino, how, how to get uh, this our uh, uh, measured baryon asymmetry of the universe? Oh, again, you know, even if this process is in equilibrium, again, you know, asymmetry is produced from forward reaction. 
but it is erased out by backward reaction. So it was the same as before. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And here, uh, it's the same, uh, kind of thing. Oh, no, here, I mean, uh, it will be different. So we will yeah, we'll see how uh, this outward equilibrium condition uh, is met to, uh, yeah, this is our uh, goal, one of our goals in the lecture, yeah. Okay, you will see. <laughs> good question, yes, very good question. Yeah, actually, it happens. As soon as lateral osmosis is generated, it, it will convert to variant osmosis due to, due to post process. process. It's not, it's not occurring at the electric phase transition. Yeah. So, spiraline, already at the temperature 10 to 10 GeV, spiraline was very active. If lateral osmosis is injected in the soup, then B plus L interaction will generate variant osmosis immediately. Yeah, that's a good, good question. Okay, so now, yeah, so we, uh, from uh, probably uh, we will have two, two more lectures and then uh, we will go into the details. So I cannot go to the details for electric biases, but uh, <laughs> we, our plan is to go to the details for uh, leptogenesis. Okay, so yeah, let's stop here today. So questions? Okay, so yeah, you, you, you can come, come to me if you have any questions. Thank you. <laughs>